Um, hi everyone, my name is Cassie Kaavaloa. For the last 13 weeks, we have conducted research, planned, implemented, and evaluated the San Diego State Public Relations Student Society of America's first ever regional conference. We work with the chapter to host their conference right downstairs to do the dive into the ocean of PR to allow students and us to learn about the public relations industry and get professional development opportunities outside of the classroom. You guys are all familiar with public relations, right? Yeah. <laughs> So PRSSA is a pre-professional organization made of more than 10,000 students nationwide and across South America. PRSSA provides special benefits to allow students to learn about the industry and dip their toes into the field and learn outside of the classroom. These include exclusive internship and scholarship opportunities, networking experiences, and even mentorship programs, all built to have students grow into their best professional. The Frederick C. Whitney chapter here at, Pier, at, Pier at San Diego State is a reflection of both peer SSA as an organization and the legacy public relations program at San Diego State. Public relations program at San Diego State under the School of Journalism and Media Studies is an accredited program run by some of the most nationally recognized scholars in the country, all of whom collectively make the second most cited faculty in the country. Additionally, the peer SSA SDC program and the San Diego State Public Relations Program are one of only 23 universities in the country to offer the Universal Accreditation Board Certificate in Principles of PR, an elite credential setting our new professionals apart. After 45 years of community service and networking in our city, the PRSCC chapter decided to dive deeper and compete to host one of the annual regional conferences taking place every year. In October 2016, at the PRSSA 2016 National Conference, the lineup of the annual regional conferences was announced in Indianapolis. Of those was the PRSSA 2017 Dive into the Ocean of PR Regional Conference. On April 8th and 9th, we hosted our first ever conference right here downstairs. So let's dive into the campaign. Hello, my name is Allison Bodden. I'm the assistant team lead for the PRSSA 2017 Regional Conference campaign. With a growing network and strong relationships with the public relations community in San Diego, we offer strong opportunities to further your career inside and outside of the classroom for our members. However, with lack of funding and lack of recognition for the Legacy Public Relations Program here at SDSU, the chapter cannot reach its fullest potential. Hi, I'm Robin. I'm here to talk about the various factors the uh, conference committee research pre-campaign to help guide our planning process. So you can see strengths. Uh, PRSSA is nationally recognized with a prominent network of over 9,600 members in 300 chapters across the country. San Diego State's public relations program is ranked number six in the United States, and PRSSA SCSU has pre-existing relationships with compelling and knowledgeable figures in the public relations industry. Next is uh, weaknesses. So there's no tax ID, which limits the potential pool of sponsors and donors, as well as the amounts of money being donated. There, this was also, um, they were also late to open registration, there was limited funding available, and this was the first time that PRSSA SCSU had a um, regional conference. And there is a niche target audience. Public relations majors make up 0.54% of the undergraduate population at SCSU. For opportunities, um, San Diego is a top tourist destination. O outreach opportunities are available to various public relations related organizations in San Diego, and the School of Journalism and Media Studies offers um, networking and support. Finally, threats. The University of Nevada Reno's PRSSA conference, PR Reimagined, is the closest in both proximity and date to the conference and could pull potential attendees. There was also the TEDx SDSU countdown event, which not only shared a date with the conference, but a it, it was down the hall in the same <laughs> venue as well. And finally, the PRSSA national website actually listed the date incorrectly for the conference uh, multiple times. And these factors helped us plan our, our conference. Hi, I'm Riley, and to expand on the threats Robin just talked about, we conducted a competitor analysis. So as you can see, number one, our largest competitor was the TEDx talk that happened the same day as our regional conference in the same building we're in right now. So this was our largest competitor for a couple main reasons, the biggest being proximity to our event. The second largest was the comparable ticket prices. Tickets were priced at $35, which was comparable to our PRSSA, SDSU ticket prices of $35. Now our second largest competitor was the University of Nevada PR Reimagined Regional Conference, which was also the same day as our event. This wasn't as big of a competitor because of location. We figured that chapters in Nevada would attend their event and chapters in California would attend ours. 
Now our third largest competitor, as you can see, is spring break. We knew a lot of um, people would be on spring break the same weekend as our regional conference. So, so to combat this issue, we wanted to market our conference as both a vacation destination and a place where you can come network with PR professionals and get a great experience, see what PR is all about in San Diego. Hi, I'm Brittany. To begin, our team conducted research to guide our campaign. Across the region every year, PR SSA chapters hold regional conferences to give students the chance to gain hands-on experience as they move forward with their career. Our team conducted qualitative research through a content analysis for each of these conferences, messaging, logistics, and publicity. On the next slide, you will see these nine conferences listed, as well as similar trends and themes that we found throughout our content analysis, which included a strong message to be used throughout the conference, a strong social media campaign, details on travel and accommodations for all guests, and some type of networking event where relationships could be built between all attendees. Our team used this information to create our own unified message to show what our chapter stands for and what San Diego uniquely brings for the public relations industry. Hi, I'm Jessica. To round out our secondary research, we did an in-depth case study on Cal State Fullerton's 2016 Regional Conference, Next Generation PR. We specifically chose their conference because they beat nine other chapters to win the Outstanding Regional Conference Award awarded by PRSSA National. Um, as we previously mentioned on the, the slide right before this, they had all success strategies that we identified would help make a successful event. Uh, in total, they had about 150 attendees. And as you can see, they had very consistent digital and physical branding. They stuck with a very futuristic aesthetic. You can see that they had it on their social media images, but also on the things that they gave out the day of, like their program and the name badges. The conference committee used this information to identify strategies and tactics to implement in order to create a similar, if not better, award-winning regional conference. Hi, I'm Valeria. The primary research team conducted pre-test and post-test surveys in order to assess attitudes, awareness, and behavior towards PR, CCA, SCSU, and the SCC Public Relations Program. Pre-test surveys set a benchmark for the PRSSA 2017 Regional Conference campaign and were sent to PRSSA SCSU members, PRSSA chapters in the Southwest region, and registered guests. Post-test surveys were sent to attendees after the conference and were measured or were used to measure the impact of the campaign. In both pre-test and post-test surveys, respondents were asked a series of questions regarding their opinions about the SCC Public Relations Program using the seven-point Likert scales. Measurements included response feelings about the SEC Public Relations Program, their perception about the quality of the program, as well as their perception of faculty and staff, and their likelihood to say, recommend the program or say good things about it. As an incentive, respondents were entered to win a PRSSA National Dues Scholarship. Post campaign evaluations were also conducted through in depth interviews with specific attendees. With all this research in mind, the campaign, campaign team dove into the planning of the conference, starting with the goal and objective objectives listed for you here on the screen. We also use the research to inform our identification of target audiences, which I will show you on the next screen. Our first target audience that we identified was PRSSA students. PRSSA students are identified as an aware public under Grunig's situational theory of publics. This means that they know about PRSSA and we sought to move them into actively involved with PRSSA SDSU through attendance at the conference. Our next target audience is public relations students at SDSU and at universities in neighboring counties and uh, cities. <clears throat> this target audience represents an aware tar audience as well as they know what PRSSA is and we sought to move them into active as well by encouraging them to attend the conference and to see what PRSSA membership is all about. Our final key audience is JMS students. They are listed in the latent category, which means they do not know what PRSSA means, as they are not PR, public relations majors. <clears throat> Through our identification of this audience, we <clears throat> excuse me, sought to move them into the aware category no, so that they would know what public relations is and how pu public relations practitioners are important to those going in the field of advertising and journalism. Hi, my name is Bailey. In order to move the needle and turn our latent audiences into aware and active audiences, we crafted three key messages that we've reinforced throughout every aspect of the PRSSA 2017 Regional Conference, down to the smallest ocean-themed decoration. First, we encourage attendees to learn from public relations pioneers that have made waves in their industries. The SDSU PR program is one of the top ten programs in the nation and is home to two of the authors of Cutliffe and Center's Effective Public Relations, which is the PR textbook taught in PR programs across the country. 
With this in mind, we wanted to highlight our faculty and our program's excellence in order to increase its prestige. Second, we aim to help attendees turn the tide in their public relations careers. By attending the conference, students got the chance to network with some of San Diego's hottest public relations professionals, as well as the chance to go deeper in their understanding of PR throughout the conference with our speaker's case studies. Lastly, we encourage attendees to explore the sea of public relations opportunities that await them here in San Diego. San Diego is home to some big name companies such as Hotel Del Coronado, San Diego Zoo Global, the Padres, SeaWorld, prominent military bases, leading medical facilities such as UCSD, as well as some of the top ranking public relations agencies in the world like Fleischmann Hillard and JPR. Knowing the opportunities that await future graduates, we encourage attendees to explore all of the avenues that they can pursue here in America's finest city. Additionally, we wanted our speakers to help us move the needle, so we craft messages that we felt would benefit attendees the most, while also maintaining a consistent theme. We asked each speaker to identify a case study that shows how they highlight messaging tactics and media relations to their specific industry, all while following the RPI process taught here at SDSU. Hi, I'm Natalia, and one of our strategies was to establish cohesive branding throughout the duration of the campaign. We wanted to do this to ensure that our conference was easily identifiable and that our target audiences knew exactly who we were and what we stood for. And research shows that this is very dependent on branding. According to the Hanker Group, which is an international award-winning public relations firm, establishing a strong and recognizable brand is an integral tool in portraying your message to your target audiences. So based on this knowledge, we wanted to establish our brand early on in the campaign. And after sifting through the, colors, the sea of color schemes and patterns available to us, we decided to stick with a dark purple, teal, light blue, and white color scheme and integrate various design elements, including a Viking wave design, our logo, and a small sailboat graphic. <laughs> As you can see over here. So like I said, we wanted to make sure that our branding was cohesive across all aspects of our conference, including the tactics that fall under our next two strategies, which are promotion and engagement. Through our promotion, we reached out, we used uh, social media, emails, word of mouth, and ad placements in the Aztec Student Union and the College of Professional Studies and Fine Arts, which are all areas that are frequented, frequented by our key target audiences of JMS students and public relations majors here at SDSU. So, our next strategy was engagement. Through engagement, we wanted to evoke a sense of pride and passion for PRSSA, the SDSU Public Relations Program, as well as the PR industry as a whole. In order to do this, our team reached out to various public relations firms and organizations around San Diego County and asked them to become involved in our campaign, either through participation in our events or through sponsorships and donations. Some of the organizations we reached out to included um, Cats and Associates, the LA Chargers, San Diego Soccers, as well as um, PRSA of the San Diego and Imperial Counties, and those are just to name a few. Through By bringing together all these organizations, we enabled our target audiences to connect with the San Diego's public relations industry and really foster um, new relationships and opportunities for them to grow. We chose to highlight social media because it encompasses all of our strategies into one cheap and effective tactic. We use Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram to employ the social learning theory, with Twitter being our main source of conference information distribution, totaling at 66 original posts throughout a 52-day period. Throughout each post, we used a variation of oceanic language, as long, along with our conference hashtags, hashtag PRSSANSD, which was the conference title in hashtag form, as well as hashtag dive in to not only maintain branding and messaging consistency, but to also encourage trackable engagement from our followers and attendees. And aside from our hashtags and ocean themed language, we also made sure to incorporate our brand um, elements that I mentioned earlier across all our social media posts, like our color scheme, the Viking waves, the sailboat, and our logo. So now we're going to turn the tides and get and discuss the details of all of our campaign events. Now, time to dive into our conference. We started our conference with agency tours, and we picked our guests up at the Hacienda Hotel in Old Town. We made our way to Cats and Associates, as you can see on the left, where we learned about public affairs as well as community outreach.
Katz & Associates is a nationally recognized communication firm specializing in is issue-based communication. They talked about an event they recently had with the Stone Brewing Company and Pure Water San Diego, where they used desalinated water to brew beer. We then made our way to the San Diego Convention Center, as you can see on the right, where we learned about their sustainability practices and their day-to-day -day activities of the communication team. We learned about how they present research in a fun and interesting way using infographics, videos, and photos. We then broke for lunch in sunny downtown San Diego and went home and got ready for a network night. Network Night was an event that invited public relations professionals of all ages from near and far to dive into their conference experience and their careers. The event took place at the Bar Bar Saloon in the historic district of Old Town, Saturday, April 8th. Guests include students from University of Nevada, Las Vegas, San Jose State University, CSU Dominguez Hills, and several others, including professionals such as PRSA, President Melissa Cameron, and Research Professor Yusuke Uzuki, <laughs> who took amazing pictures, as you can see here. The um, event had yummy appetizers, giant gold balloons that, were perf oh, that said PRSA that were perfect for Snapchatting and Instagramming with, perfect especially because we had two specialized Snapchat filters that featured our logo and our theme colors and waves, and even our hashtags, PRSSA and SD, and dive in. We also had a photo booth that printed the pictures immediately and was also on brand. And there was um, an air of everyone getting to know each other. Everyone was kind. Everyone was relaxed. And when they left that night, after hanging around the tables within the cozy event space of the Bar Bar Saloon, they left not with a goodbye, but a see you tomorrow. On Sunday morning, we welcomed our attendees aboard SDSU's campus to kick off the conference programming. We welcomed back attendees from Network Night and from CSU Dominguez Hills, but we also added UNLV and a member of the PRSSA National Committee. Our speakers included uh, representatives from Edelman, Stalwart Communications, all of PR, and the Los Angeles Chargers. At the conclusion of our conference, the PRSSA National Representative uh, rep <laughs> excuse me, presented the committee team with a certificate of recognition, as you can see here. Hi, I'm Anya, and after the weekend event, we began our evaluation process to see if our campaign made a splash. As Bailey and Natalia mentioned earlier, social media was key in not only promoting the conference, but also in promoting engagement between guests and PRSA and SDSU and their home chapters. We measured engagement by doing total engagement, which is a combination of likes, comments, retweets, shares, etc. for each platform. We had 657 engagements on Twitter, 578 on Instagram, and 121 Additionally, we designed four Snapchat filters, two to be used on network night and two on conference day. For those, we had 118 conversions, which is the amount of times a Snapchat filter is chosen, meaning that with the 80 guests over the two-day period, it's safe to assume that every guest could have used a Snapchat filter at least once. Additionally, we had 858 impressions, which is the amount of times users see a filter as they swipe through the filters in their area and 7,400 views, which is the amount of times friends see a Snapchat filter either through a direct snap or on a user's story. And we use these social media metrics to measure if we move the needle from a aware to active audience. Hi everyone, my name is Vanessa. Um, so most of us here can agree that any the most important component of any public relations campaign is evaluation. Our team wanted to measure how much we move the needle from our campaign on attitudes, awareness, perceptions, and feelings towards not only SCSU's public relations program, but also the PRSSA SCSU chapter. First, we measured general feelings towards SCSU's public relations program. The pre-conference sur survey that we talked about earlier gave an average of 4.08, with the post-conference data showing a new average of 4.52. This was a 10.72% increase towards general feelings towards the SCSU public relations program. Now basically what this means is that respondents went from feeling neutral to somewhat agreeing with the positive statements that we asked about the PR program. We also wanted to measure the likelihood of respondents to recommend the public relations program to others. The pre-conference data showed an average of 5.41, with the post-conference data showing a new average of 6.43. This was an overall increase of 18.76%. This means that respondents went from somewhat agreeing that they would recommend the public relations program to others to strongly agreeing. We also wanted to measure the impact our conference had on PRSSA SDSU members and their attitudes and feelings towards the PRSSA SDSU chapter. 
Before the conference, we asked members whether or not they felt that the organization was beneficial to their lives. The pre-conference data showed an average of 5.09, with the post-conference data showing a new average of 6.15. This was an overall increase of 20.82%. <clears throat> this basically means that respondents went from somewhat agreeing that the organization was beneficial to their lives to agree. Lastly, we saw the biggest percent of growth, percent of change, with questions regarding to the quality of SDSU's public relations faculty and the quality of the PR program. The pre-conference data showed an average of 5.36, with the post-conference data showing a new average of 6.50. This is an overall increase of more than 21% regarding the quality of PR SDSU's public relations faculty and the quality of the program. Our team also conducted one in-depth interview with the conference guests to better evaluate the conference's intangible impact on attendees. We asked a public relations, we asked a journalism major with an emphasis in public relations who joined PRSSA SDSU in fall 2016 a few questions about his overall experience within the chapter and also his thoughts on the conference weekend. So first, um, he mentioned that before the conference, he wasn't really involved within the chapter. He only knew other members on a very superficial level. He then stated that the conference really allowed him to develop stronger feelings with not only members in the PRSSA SDSU chapter, but PRSSA members across the region. We also wanted to measure um, the impact the conference actually had on him. So he was an active volunteer on conference day and uh, mentioned that the conference motivated him to get more involved within the PRSSA SDSU chapter. After the conference, he decided to run for a position on the PRSSA SDSU executive board for the upcoming school year. This, this shows how we achieved to move an aware PRSSA SDSU member into an active one. Lastly, we asked the conference guest what he thought hit the most important takeaway from the conference weekend was. He stated, I feel like I'm better suited to step into or dive into PR, dive into the ocean of PR that is. And with that, we can conclude that our conference successfully met its overall goal, which is to provide professional development opportunities to public relations students. Now I'm going to hand it over to Valeria to talk about everyone's favorite word, money. In order to look at COP successes, the team reached out to potential sponsors. Local agencies, organizations, and businesses received sponsorship letters, as well as personalized emails with sponsorship packages. In total, we received 2,400 in donations, with the largest donation coming from PRSA, SGIC, who donated 1,100. Ticket sales also accounted for a large percentage of our sales. We received 4,258 in ticket sales. Overall, the net profit for the conference was 1869 which is significant because PRSSA SDSU will be able to use the money to help members dive deeper into their careers. $1,800 is a lot of money. $1,800 will, will pay for six students' registration fees at the National Conference in Boston next year. Let's look at the big picture in that way. Across all three of our events, 80 guests from more than 400 miles outside of San Diego traveled to our city to learn about public relations and engage with the public relations community. 23 members and non-members volunteer their time to plan and implement this conference, not only allowing the chapter to grow externally, but to grow stronger internally. Through speaker organizations, our agency to our hosts, and our sponsors, the chapter has fostered relationships with 21 organizations, allowing them to broaden their horizons and expand their network. Over the last 13 weeks, we've reached, we've reached and exceeded two of our three objectives. The third one, raising PRSSA SDC membership by 10% by the fall of 2017, will be determined in the fall of 2017 because dues are due then. So Vivian, <laughs> we'll talk to you later. <laughs> the campaign team can now make the following recommendations to keep riding this wave of success. The first one, keep growing. We foster these new relationships with organizations from across the region and from across from every corner of the industry. There are many fish in the sea, so keep well, like keep reaching out and looking for new opportunities and new resources for the chapter. Next, keep encouraging involvement from your younger members. Get them involved, start conversations with them, and feed their enthusiasm with opportunity. Lastly, as a student organization and a nonprofit, the chapter would benefit from instituting a tax ID. Doing so would open the door for more fundraising opportunities and thus more resources for the chapter. So it's not every day that you get to make a difference in students' careers or their education or the industry itself, but with PRSSA it kind of is. Over 13 weeks we watch students grow into leaders. We watch them 
make new friends, and connect with professionals. We saw some students get some interviews, and most importantly, <laughs> most importantly, we saw students find their voice and find their direction in our careers. We saw students grow into leadership positions, as some will. Today on May 1st, the 2017-2018 Executive Board will step into their leadership roles, and I want to congratulate the members that are here today. I can say from experience that it is incredibly rewarding to see the fruits of your labor turn into confident, talented students. We, want to look, we look forward to seeing it continue, and we hope that you take the success and the impact from our campaign and the support and enthusiasm from your members and dive deeper. Keep networking and growing and exploring the opportunities that await you as the leadership and as the face of this chapter. Every person here played a role in not only the students' lot, students' careers, but in the future of public relations. Keep networking, growing, and exploring. I want to thank you all for allowing us to be a part of your journey. I want to thank you all for coming here and listening to our conversations. And I want to thank you all for coming here and diving in with the JMS 585 here at the SAFE 2017 Regional Conference campus.